Well, I don't know about you, but I've stayed away from the whole 5.7 pistol thing for a couple of different reasons. One, the pistol was expensive, the ammo was expensive, and quite honestly, the first ones like the FN 5.7 were just butt ugly. I mean, the things were hands down some of the worst looking pistols I've ever seen in my life, and they just didn't feel any better than they really looked, right? And they were straight fugly. If you don't know what fugly means, it's F-U-G-L-Y. I think you can figure it out from there. And I say that actually being a huge FN fan. Like I literally grew up shooting FN machine guns as a young ranger in the military, but it just didn't make me want to get into that. So recently I was at the range with my buddy Jonathan from Tactical Toolbox, and he had one of these right here, the Rock 5.7 from Palmetto State Armory. So I took a look at the thing and I was like, that's a pretty low bore axis. The grip felt pretty good. The pistol looked pretty good. It had a really good trigger. So I got very intrigued finally about a 5.7 pistol. So I reached out to Palmetto State Armory and they were cool enough to send this exact pistol out to the channel for testing. And I bought a couple of hundred rounds, actually a little bit more of the 5.7 ammo. Definitely not cheap ammo still, but not too bad because really something like this is not gonna be your main squeeze. This is like a date night once a month kind of thing where you take it out. Uh, it serves a very specific purpose, and we'll talk more about who this may be for in a couple of minutes. And of course, if you guys are interested in doing your own research on this or anything else you see here in the video, I will leave a full parts list in the description below. It's the first link, you can't miss it. That way you can kind of read and check everything out for yourself if you are interested. So the rock came in, I grabbed all of the ammo, and I headed up to Scottsdale Gun Club in Scottsdale, Arizona to use their indoor range because it's still like 118 degrees in Arizona. And I just wanted to have a nice relaxing day in the air conditioning with a new pistol that I was very interested in. And I don't know if you've ever seen a range like they have at Scottsdale Gun Club, but it's actually really nice to go in there and hang out and just kind of shoot in the AC for once. And of course, if you've got that whole titanium lounge level access to that place, that is a really, really cool place to go and hang out. I got the rock out on the range, got it up and running, and I kind of forgot how fun it was to shoot things like the 5.7. And I just started to have a lot of fun because again, super low bore axis, very little recoil impulse. And it was just a ton of fun to run this thing out there and kind of break this pistol in and see how it was actually gonna perform out there with its minimal recoil impulse. Now, one thing you have to remember is even though that is a very low recoil impulse pistol, that 5.7 round is traveling at like 1700 plus feet per second, which is just an aching wound channel waiting to happen because velocity equals damage right as long as you're using the right ammo but it's still just a lot of fun when you think about the science aspect of what this pistol can actually accomplish with the appropriate ammo well, before we get into the rest of the range footage we got to pay the bills here with the plug and that is the sponsor of today's video and that is going to be tack pack now if you don't know what tack pack is they are a monthly subscription box you could get everything from parts to your build cleaning equipment outdoor camping hunting and fishing stuff even a good axe should you need that if that's something you are interested or getting a loved one that Check them out at tackpack.com and use code TC to get yourself a free tactical gift after that first month. Back into that range time. So I got a couple hundred-ish, a little bit more rounds for this thing out there at the Scottsdale Gun Club on the day of filming. This thing ran clean with no malfunctions, which is pretty much what I expected with the overall feel and quality of the rock and having used like the PSA dagger before, which just turned out to be awesome. And of course I was running decent ammo. I was using the Fioki High Performance 40 grain hollow points. Honestly, this thing was just super easy to run and run very fast. The problem is it's got 23 round magazines and you start having so much fun out there, it's real quick to put a hurt in your wallet. You can put a lot of rounds down range fast with this low recoil and the way it runs. So you've got to be cognizant with those 23 round mags. Each time you're pulling the trigger, you're spending like 63 cents, although it's still just a ton of fun. Now on this one, I have the Holosun 407K as a dot, and that is like one of my favorite micro optics because it's just so good. And that actually came on the pistol with the threaded barrel and the taller sights for what's probably gonna be an exceptional price that's not gonna be attainable by any other manufacturer out there in the market because PSA owns all the company that makes these parts, obviously, besides the optic. After wrapping up out on the range, it ran 100% reliable. The texture, the frame, the angles, the overall feel of the rock was just absolutely solid. I can see why they named it The Rock. 
The controls were super easy to use and operate. They seemed to be right in the spot where you needed them to be. The mag release is swappable so my lefties can get some love out there in the world finally. The grip is a little wider front to back to accommodate those 5.7 magazines, but it's not too large even for smaller handed people. Now on that frame, you're gonna get a single finger groove, a single undercut on the trigger guard, plenty of rail space out front for your lights and other things you wanna screw on there. There are reference points and texture points out on the front of the frame. The texture all over is kinda of like that sandpaper finish, which encompasses almost the entire pistol grip and high up towards the slide, which I'm a huge fan of. And then at the bottom of the grip, you're gonna have some kind of surface cutout area so you can strip a magazine out should that ever be needed. I know some of you need all of those specs and we're going to give them to you with some music and then we're going to do some trigger pulls. <laughs> I know some of you guys just love the spec sheet time and the music that goes with it. So let me know in the comments what you want to hear next for spec sheet music. And if you guys like this content and you find it either informative or engaging or just fun to watch, and you like spreading the 2A message, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn all the notification things on. That's gonna do a couple things. One, make sure you don't miss anything. Two, tells YouTube to push this video to other people, maybe some of which have never seen 2A content, and we can win some of those people over. I suggest you also do that with all of your other favorite channels because it's a huge professional help to me and then when you do that, and it spreads our message. Now let's go ahead and check out that trigger on the pull gauge. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the trigger pulls on the PSA rock here, but let's check out that trigger. The shoe is kind of curved. Trigger shoe safety goes almost all the way sub flush, a little bit of poke out, but it's not uncomfortable. There's your take up to a solid wall and just an immediate break. There's that reset, it's tactile, it's audible. And again, just a clean wall and a break. So well done on that trigger. We'll bust out the new digital trigger gauge here that a viewer sent in because the other one was getting wonky. All right, so our first pull, 3.74, that's a little light. I think it's a little heavier than that. I'll go a little higher on the trigger shoe here, right about there, five pounds. That's really about what it feels like, four and a half to five pounds to me. We'll do one more here. All right, 4.72. So I think we are good on the rock trigger right there, but again, well done for a striker fire design ish kind of trigger all right let's wrap it up because no glove no love right so this model as you see it 100 percent right here hollow sun included 5.99 so that's a pretty exceptional deal for the way this thing comes you get two magazines 23 rounds i wish it was three that's always the magic number but you get the hollow sun 407k the tall sights the threaded barrel and what overall seems to be a pretty awesome 57 pistol now to put that in some reference for you, if you were to go out and say buy the FN, you could probably get three of these almost, just almost for the price of one FN 5.7. If you were to go get one like the Ruger 5.7, you could buy this as you see it with the optic and about 100 rounds of ammo for the same price. So it seems to be that PSA has done it again, giving us what we want at a price that nobody else can even come close to. But like I said up front, I've never been a fan of 5.7 pistols because they were so expensive up front and the ammo was more expensive. But PSA has kind of changed that, except for the ammo. We're all still screwed there. But you can get that pistol with an optic for what's actually a really good price. But who is this really for and who would really want a 5.7 pistol like the Rock? And for me, that's really two kind of people. One, you just really want a 5.7 pistol because they're kind of cool and fun and you want to take it out because it's not gonna be your main squeeze. It's not gonna be the nine millimeter you take out there and blast 500 rounds on one day. This is a specific thing you take out on date night once a month, or you have a specific purpose. And that purpose is probably gonna be for my more rural or my country folk out there. And what I mean by rural or country folk is, because I love me some rural and country folk, is you have longer distances you deal with. Somebody like me, I live in an urban concrete jungle. I don't have long distances like that for the most part. So nine millimeter pistol, 45, 40, whatever you wanna carry, is gonna do you just fine. Now, if you live on a farm or you have hundreds of acres of land or even 20 or 30 acres, you may have that instance where say a bear is attacking your dog and you can go ahead and put some rounds, 50 rounds, 50 yards down range and take care of that issue. So if you're someone like that, that's where something like a 5.7 comes into play. As long as your skills and fundamental and training 
is up to snuff with the distances you are attempting to engage at. But as always, you have to do your own research and see if the 5.7 rock or any 5.7 or any pistol or rifle is going to fulfill the need you want it to. And of course, if it fits within your budget. A huge thank you to all of my Patreons. It's because of you that a lot of what happens here on the channel is possible. And I thank each and every one of you for that. For all the viewers, subscribers, and commenters, I love you guys as well. If you want to support the channel in any way, you can check out the Patreon link down below, any of the links in the description, or go to tacticalconsiderations.com and check out any of the build lists or parts lists. That all does help the channel quite a bit. Keep doing it out on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.